everybody, Dalton Vaughn here at the Better Outdoors Archery Pro Shop and in part three of our Pro Shop Bow Build series we'll be taking that VXR 31.5 from part two and going through our full stage three broadhead tune process. Now that tune is included with all of our flagship bows, optional on all of the bows that we sell whether they're in store or the ones we can ship online to your door tuned. Whether you mail your bow to us, you come in personally with an appointment and we set it up, set your own bow up to you even better, or if you come in to have one restrung. We have lots of ways you can go about getting your stage three tune and all the service and the time that we're going to spend with you to make it that much better. Now through this video, we'll take you through all the steps that, that entails our stage three tune and show you a few tricks and tips along the way and some insight on why we do things the way that we do. So. Hope you guys can learn a little bit from this video and hope y'all enjoy it like always. Now, let's go start on this stage three tune. Now, for the first step of our stage three tune process, we've got this bow in the draw board, and the draw board allows us to pull the bow back uh, with the machine so we can look at our cam timing, we can measure our draw length, look at cam lean, diagnose some other issues, you know, and some other, some other bows that have actual problems uh, outside of tuning, and we can check our rest timing and some other things. So. We're going to start by checking our draw length, we're going to check our cam timing, and we're going to check our drop away to make sure that it's going to fall. Okay. Now, we're going to check our draw length, and we're going to check our AMO draw length first. That's going to be basically one and three quarter inch past the deepest point of the right of the grip. There's a few ways to measure this, okay. So our AMO draw length is 29 and 3 eighths. Now a measurement that I like to use and write down for our customers too, and on my own, is our act, what I call our overall length. That's where I'm going to put the tape on the front of the peg, and I'm going to draw all, and I'm going to measure all the way to the back of the D loop. That includes the bow draw length plus the D loop length, and it is 28 and uh, 9 7 sixteenths. So that gives us that length. We're going to put that in our tune chart here in a moment. And the next thing is I want to check our cam timing and make sure our stops are hitting the same. Make a fine adjustment here. And it looks like they're hitting dead the same, so that's good. And then our drop away, we're going to check, make sure this isn't too tight or too loose, either one. Feels like it's about right, but we're going to actually look at it and see when it drops. So it drops roughly two and a half to three inches uh, going forwards is when the drop away gets out of the way. So now we're going to move over to the scale and we're going to check our draw weight and make sure that's where we want it for this build and then we'll start paper tuning. Now for our draw weight, I want to be right around that 59 to 61 pound range. That's where the, the arrows for this VXR are built to spine out the right way. And as well, that's the kind of weight that I like to shoot. So, let's check this on the scale. Fifty-nine point nine seven. So I'm going to leave it there. I like that my limbs are turned all the way up, so I've met peak weight uh, for this particular setup. So this is really perfect for me. So now let's go start on our paper tuning. A major part of our stage three tune, whether you buy a new bow from us or bring your existing bow in for service, is the fit aspect of the bow. So now we'll go through a few things that we look for to make your bows fit that much better. Now to start off, we have you draw the bow back and take a couple shots and see how the draw length fits, how your arm fits the bow, how the string kind of fits your face, and make sure that you don't have something just way out, or if you have something going on that you don't realize, well, we're here to help. So we have you take a few shots to see this. Then we move on to having you draw back the bow, and we look specifically at your anchor point, how the string fits your face and your nose and the peep and make sure that everything there lines up because we don't want to have tuning issues from poor bow fit. Now one of the most important aspects of it is your grip and we go through a few different things and show you some tricks and tips and some help on how to make that grip that much better and torque free. Now with the initial fit of the bow to the shooter done, now we can go and we're going to shoot through the paper tuner and this is going to tell us how the bow's performing, if we need to make any more form changes, and 
the paper tuner, it, what it shows is basically a snapshot of how the arrow's flying straight out of the bow before the fletchings kick in. Uh, we do this on some tunes with fletch and some without. For this one, we're doing with fletch uh, for our standard stage three hunting tune. But this, this test will definitely get us started, but it's no means of be all end all tuning method. So now let's shoot it through the paper and see what adjustments we need to make. Now, according to our tear, we've got a tail left tear, so we're going to go make some adjustments uh, to the bow, and in some cases, we'll shoot it multiple times to make sure of our results, but I'm pretty confident that we've got a left tear with me. Now, since we have a left tear through paper with this, we're going to actually move the top hats on this bow, and if you've, you bring a bow in that has uh, yokes, we're going to yoke tune it. Some bows need the cam shim for this sort of thing, and as well, some need the cable rod adjusted, the angle of that. So just depends on what bow we're working on and what bow you mail or bring in to us as to what we're going to do. But for this bow, let's press it and let's move these top hats over. Now with our top hats moved over, let's make another shot through the paper and see what the results are now. And now we have a really good tear. All four veins are going in straight. The point's going straight in. So this arrow's coming out of the bow good and straight, and that's what we're looking for. So now we can move on to the next step. Now for our next step, we're going to shoot here at 10 yards. We're going to just get the sight roughly sided in. That way at least we can hit close to the dot. We're not worried about just dead on accuracy yet. What we're worried about here is a little more bow fit, and we're worried about where the peat pipe is. We want to get it close. It don't have to be perfect yet. That's coming up in the next step. And then we can actually move on to walk back to them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and shoot here at 10 yards and get this dialed in. All right, looks like the first shot was really high, so we moved the sight up with the mass adjust. This is an Excel AccuHunter, of course. And it looks like now that we've moved our elevation to be close, we are due to the rights. But before we adjust that, let's check our peep height and see if it's close. And our peep's got to come down quite a bit, actually, but probably not enough to have to press it just yet. All right, now let's try it again. Just a hair low, so we're going to move it back up. And now we've got that uh, couple inches to the right, so I'm going to take my wrench now, if you're using the Excel AccuHunter, we're going to move the mass adjust first because I want to try to get the micro adjust to stay in the center for later micro adjustments. I'd rather go ahead and move my mass adjust. So I'm going to move the, the big bolt at the bottom. We're going to move it back to the right. Make sure our scope's still straight from the side. And it is now. Tighten it all the way back up and we'll shoot it again. All right, and we're just a hair bit low. Now that we move the peep down, we're gonna move, turn just our D-loop and get our peep back pretty well straight since we did move it in the string. We'll tie that here in a bit. Okay, we'll give it one more shot and move it down just a hair. Then we'll start with the next step. Now, we're up here at three yards, and you'd say, why are you doing a lot of bow tuning at three yards? Ain't we supposed to be shooting 20 or 30? Well, here's where one of the most important steps really starts for me and for our customer builds is here at three yards, we're going to shoot it, and we're going to get the arrow in the dead center of that line. Now, once it's dead center of that line, that basically means that my sight and my rest are on the same plane. So, if I walk back to 20, and I shoot left or I shoot right, I'm going to have to make either a form adjustment or more so make a bow adjustment because we want our arrow to shoot 
the same horizontal impact from three yards to 20 to 60 to 80. None of that really should change if you're both set up correctly. And of course you're shooting without a lot of wind, but I digress. So now we're gonna shoot here at three yards. We're gonna get this sight dead center of that line. We're just a slightly right, so we're gonna move our sight just slightly to the right as well. Okay, now shoot it again. It looks like that one's dead center of the target. So now we're gonna move on to 20 yards and do the same shot. I'm back here at 20 yards, we're gonna shoot at the same line. No, nothing's been changed. It looks like that one was dead center of the line. We're gonna make another shot. Well, it looks like our walk back tune is good. So now we can move on to setting our peep height. Now when we go to set our peep height with a movable style sight, whether it's a hunting bow or a target bow, it's all really the same. Uh, we wanna set the peep height to a median distance. Uh, for my bow, I wanna set it to about 35 yards to be perfectly lined. So at 20, I have to scrunch up a little bit, but at 35, 40, 50, I don't have to come out of my anchor to still see through the peep. It's a little target trick a lot of people have talked about. So what we've learned is with this bow, it's roughly shooting 270 to 280 feet per second according to the computer. We're gonna shoot it through the chrono in a bit. Uh, we wanna get this thing shooting four to six inches high of a dot and then check our peep height to see if it's correct for this setup. Now, if it's not, we'll move the peep high or low to accommodate for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it from my 20 mark and give it a shot and we'll see where it lands and then we can make some adjustments. Now that we're shooting around, it looks like around five inches high. That's just about right. Four to five inches, just about perfect for what I want to do. So we're going to draw back eyes closed. We're going to move this peep height match the scope as far as height goes. And then we're going to also, when we do this, we're going to look and see if the peep size is correct for the scope so that the sight picture is better and is useful in a variety of lighting conditions. Now with a fixed pin sight, we do things a little bit differently, but with this adjustable, this is the, what we feel like is the very best way to do it. Now I'm gonna draw back, eyes closed. Anchor off normally and get as comfortable as I can. I like that. I'm gonna get all the way comfortable. My peep's just a little too high. So I'm just gonna move it down. This is why we haven't tied it yet so we can still move it because there's still a lot of adjustments here that was needed. All right, let's do it again. All right, looks like our peep height is just about perfect. It's really comfortable there. And then our peep size looks good. So now we can go and install our nose button. Now I've put the nose button just on the string. We're not gonna actually shoot the bow. We're just gonna draw it back and set the height. And the nose button, it touches on your nose. So it's a more consistent, uh, basically kisser button style setup and it's got little spikes on it so you can feel it when it's on your nose because we have tried a kisser button up here and you couldn't feel it just real well, but these little spikes you can. I really like this for as inexpensive as they are, it's definitely worth a look. So I'm gonna draw this bow back. We're gonna set the height for that. Now I have the height set for this and it feels good. I get my anchor nose to it, feels good. I can see through the peep good and square on both all sides. I like it. So now let's go tie everything in. Now we're gonna record our peep height and our nose button height and put that in our tune chart. So let's get that before we even serve anything. And our peep height is 5.418. Then our nose button is 
Now, with all that wrote on our tune chart, we can now get everything served in. Now with our peep tied in, we have our nose button tied in, we turn the string so it's pretty well straight with the world now. So now we can move on to my favorite part of our whole tuning process, broadhead tuning, and tell you why that's so important. Now starting to get into broadhead tuning, first let's talk about some of the things we're going to use for this broadhead tune. So we're going to be using the Grim Reaper Micro Hybrid, and this is a four blade broadhead. This is a two one and a quarter inch mechanicals with two one and a sixteenth fixed heads so uh, extremely reliable we've got extremely good penetration with these setups and for shooting a little bit lower energy uh, 400 and what 26 grain arrow and 60 pounds roughly uh, this is really the ideal size broadhead for that particular setup for me personally with a mechanical or hybrid setup and then we're also going to be using for our target this morel high roller foam style target and these are extremely good for broadhead tuning you can shoot fill points into them and if you're not shooting a lot of fixed heads that really chew the target up these things last a long time they do really good here in store for our tuning and we give them a real beating so ours wear a lot faster of course but really impressed with these are really lightweight too and i think you'll be happy as well now, why we broadhead tune? So this is a really deep subject, and I don't. I just want to brush the top of this. And for us to feel like a bow's tuned and ready to go ethically hunt, we want our broadhead and a field point arrow to group the same. Now, we're not worried about initially point of impact. That's easily addressed by moving the sights. What we're more concerned with is being able to get on to shoot the same, because in our opinion, your broadhead and your field point should shoot the same in any distance you shoot. They should fly the same, all of those details. They should all be the same. And what that gives you, for one, is accuracy and confidence. And when you're practicing with your field points outside in the yard, well, you're still making progress for your actual what you're going to be hunting with because they shoot the same. And then also, if they do shoot the same, that means you're getting the best transfer of energy into the animal, the most penetration because the arrow is coming straight out of the bow. It's going straight into what you're shooting at. So you get, of course, deeper penetration, uh, less deflections on uh, ribs and things like that inside the cavity. Uh, that does help. Now, there's some other things you can do outside of that setup-wise to make those situations better. But in the end, if we can get your broadhead and your field point shooting the same, that's pretty much where you need to start and go hunting at. We're really confident there. And that's part of our big part of our stage three tune is to go through and do that. So now let's go over to the range with our Grim Reaper Micro Hybrid and let's go test it out. Let's get these in a, these in a field point shooting the same. Now to actually get on the range and do some broadhead tuning, we've got our Grim Reaper Micro Hybrid uh, practice head and we're going to shoot this practice head and we're going to shoot a field point into the high roller target. We have an orange dot on the target. Makes it a little easier to see. And we're going to see where they group at. By the sound of that, I'm liking these results already, so let's go down there and check it out a little closer. Well guys, I'm really, really satisfied with how well this bow tuned up from start to finish. 
Uh, going through part one of our series where we built custom Black Eagle arrows to match the spine needs for this bow. And then in part two where we set everything up and how we set everything up to make it the best that it can be before we even draw the bow back. And then here in part three where you've seen our stage three tune process and what goes into that, whether you mail your bow in, you buy a new bow from us, or you bring your existing bow in for new strings or just a tune by itself, any of those, this is what goes into that plus a lot more when we work with the shooter personally. But we've got our Groom Reaper Micro Hybrid here, and we've got our field point touching it right here. So to me, I'm 100% confident to go to the woods at 20 yards and be able to harvest an animal. I've got no qualms with taking it out just as is. That's exactly what I'm after. And to me, this is the bare minimum to get out there and ethically hunt and know that, hey, you know, if I shoot, my broadhead's gonna shoot the same as I've been shooting, and I don't have to go out there and move my sights to make my broadhead hit uh, where it's supposed to and all this. You should never have to do that, especially as good as the equipment is these days. Now, we're gonna move on from here, and we're gonna go and check the speed on this bow, and then we're gonna go remeasure all of the details and make sure that everything is where it was set at and make any, any minor adjustments and just check everything over before we're ready to take this out in part four and shoot at some at some distance. So let's go check and see how fast it is. Now for our speed test, we're shooting a 426 grain Black Eagle Rampage. We're at 59.97 pounds with a 29 and 3 8 inch AMO draw length. We're gonna shoot it through this Pro Chrono and see what kind of speed we get. Two hundred and seventy-eight feet per second. So now we're going to take that number. We're going to go recheck all of our numbers from our tune and put them on a tune chart, and then we'll start getting ready for part four. Now the last step of our stage three tune process is probably one of the most critical next to broadhead tuning, in my opinion, and that's where we fill out our tune chart and we put all your information in this tune chart. Uh, your arrow details, your draw links, all these different things. Uh, that way, if you bring your bow in for service later, or maybe come buy a new bow, or bring it in for new strings, anything that might make a major change, or if you feel like there has been a change, we can go back to your tune chart that we're going to give you, and that way we can make those changes back to the way it was the first day we set it up. So, let's go finish that off. And in the meantime, you guys, go follow us on Instagram, Go follow us on Facebook at Better Outdoors Archery Pro Shop. Visit our website at betteroutdoors.net. Uh, send us an email at betteroutdoorsarchery at gmail.com. Of course, subscribe to us here on YouTube. We've got part four of this series coming up, and we've got a lot more to go from there. A lot of cool stuff coming up. So we appreciate you guys for watching, and now I'm going to get to getting this tune chart done. Thank you all.